anywhere. Times of persecution on the job. Times of difficult training. How about family arguments? Family separation. Divorce. Disease. Chemo. Radiation. Their battlefronts all on their own. <laughs> pray for the Nichols. Pray for Marty. We pray for you often. The valleys of life that are there. You see, when the psalmist says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in time of trouble, we don't set out to look for trouble. <laughs> we don't have to. It's right there. <laughs> trouble is right there with us. The psalmist goes on to say in verse 2, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. We will not fear when the earth gives way. How about that? <laughs> How about that? You know, I look at the verse and it says, verse 3, though the waters roar and foam. I grew up on the shores of Lake Erie. I'm hoping to do some time there in a few weeks <laughs> on those shores, those peaceful shores. And I long that. And sometimes I would drive along Route 5. There it goes right up along the lake, in case you don't know, Route 5. And I would look at the houses on the beach and say, oh, boy, if I had the money, that's where I'd want to be walk those beaches and pray and read your Bible. Something about the beach, those waves that take away from your pain and your sorrow. But let me tell you, in a blizzard, in a storm, you don't want to be in one of them houses on the beach. <laughs> houses that are flooded and the waters roar. <laughs> that gentle wave turns into a roar and the waves are huge and there's foam in there and it's nasty and I'm thinking you know what I think a mile from the beach is good <laughs> it's true it's so true but it says even when the waves roar and they foam those times of trouble in our lives that are like that you know, in our grief class, we talk about grieving coming as waves. <laughs> you know, it's a wave, and it goes out, and it comes in. And sometimes all waves are not created equal, are they? <laughs> and sometimes you're in the grocery store, and you're doing fine, and then you see something that reminds you of what your husband wanted, <laughs> what your husband always got, or whatever, and there's this big wave comes and knocks you right down, and then the tears are coming down your face. Even when the waters roar and they foam, God is there. God is there. God is there. Now for almost 25 years, I've lived here in the Hudson Valley. And we have our mountains, don't we? Well, what happened about 10 years ago? <laughs> mountains erode, you know, and they change. And forest fires we've seen on, on 55 there going towards New Paltz destroy the beauty of it. Those fires come and destroy everything of beauty there. There's fault lines. On 52, a, a great big hunk of the mountain decided to fall down. Just fall down. <laughs> you know, when those signs say, beware of falling rock, we need to beware. <laughs> we who live here just don't even pay attention to those signs, and we, and we just drive right by like nothing. Well, one poor woman was caught with that, wasn't she? About, I think it was 10 years ago, a great big huge chunk off of 52 just came right down. Came right down. Though the mountains quake, we're surging. Though the waters foam and roar, no matter the situation in your life, God is there. God is our refuge. God is our refuge and our strength. Amen? He's our refuge and our strength. 
Verse 2 begins with these examples by stating a statement of faith. Verse 2 says, therefore we will not fear. <laughs> that comes before those examples of the waves. Before the examples of the, earth, of the mountains quaking. <laughs> before that, the psalmist declares, we will not fear. We will not fear. Though we face all these troubles... They're varied and great. The Lord says that many are the trials of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from, him, them from them all. Yet in these extreme cases where he lists the, the waters roaring and the mountains quaking, there's no fear. Why is there no fear? We're talking about serious things here. And yet, why would we fear? Why would we not fear? How can we not? The psalmist shares his secret here in verse 4. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the most holy dwells. God is within her. She will not fail. God will help her at the break of day. There's a secret there. You know, Jerusalem doesn't have a river to water it. Many, many cities have a river that comes <laughs> and that waters the city. But Jerusalem doesn't have a physical river. And yet there is a spiritual river there that the psalmist is talking about for the people of God. You find an ever-flowing source of joy and gladness. Joy and gladness in his presence. In his presence. No matter what the, the oceans do, no matter what the mountains do, there is a peace in God's presence. There is a joy there. In the midst of trouble, Extreme trouble, severe trouble, the psalmist finds peace in the middle of the catastrophe. Peace. He speaks of peace and even a gladness. A gladness. You know, his pastor went through his cancer treatments. He continued to minister. He continued to lead us to preach for a long time, just the last few months, when words didn't make sense and he couldn't put thoughts onto paper and his vision was going and he couldn't read his notes, he couldn't write his notes that only at the very end, but he continued to minister. Because you see, we knew what God called us to do. We prayed from the very beginning, Lord, use this for your glory. And he did. I think sometimes people looked at me and said, that poor girl, she don't know what's going on. <laughs> I knew what was going on, but I knew what we were supposed to do. I knew what we were supposed to do, and we kept going to that river of God, the river of God to get the peace from God, to get the gladness that we needed. I always say that as my husband's humor, and you know he was humor man. <laughs> he was the good humor man. <laughs> As his, as his humor began to wane off, my sons just picked right up. So we always had a laugh in our house, and we always had a joy, and it comes from God. It comes from finding that place of peace in God's presence. My husband, I'll never forget him going into brain surgery. You know, they give you all these papers, what could happen, what could happen, <laughs> Because they don't know. <laughs> as wise as our medical doctors are, there's things, especially about the brain, that they don't know. That they don't know. But my husband had a piece as they wheeled him down the halls of Albany Medical Center. He had a piece. He said, I don't understand it, but I have a piece. And that peace comes from Jesus. That peace comes from pressing in to the river of God where there's joy and where there's peace. We sought that peace as we did chemo, as we did radiation, as we went through all that man had to offer. 
We sought that peace because that peace is needed every day. That river needs to flow every day. It was in God's presence that we found that peace, that we found that gladness. We have to place our trust in the fact that God is with us. Verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present. He is ever with us. He is ever-present in time of need. We need to put our trust in him, find shelter for our minds, shelter for our bodies, shelter for our souls in his presence, in that presence. You know, I think of the Israelites in Exodus 14 as they're being led out from Egypt and Pharaoh is pursuing them and they go to the Red Sea. They're there with the Red Sea before them and Pharaoh's army is coming to get them. What does God say to them? Stand still and see the deliverance of your God. Some of you are at the river's edge today. You're at the river's edge and God wants you to know to stand still. To stand still and see his deliverance. In 2 Kings 19, is a very interesting story there. A king named Sennacherib comes against Israel. He insults King Hezekiah. He insults the armies of the living God. He even says, he sends a letter. He says, I'm coming and you're, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're in trouble. I'm coming. He says, the king even goes on to insult the God of heaven. He said, don't think that your God's going to save you. That's what he told him. Don't think that he's going to save you. He's, and he starts listing countries. Their gods didn't help them. Their gods didn't help them. Their gods didn't help them. As Hezekiah takes that letter and he goes into the altar in the temple and he lays it out. He said, Lord, this is what he said. This is what he said to me, to Israel, against your prophets, against your armies. This is what he said against you. God sends Isaiah <laughs> the prophet to King Hezekiah. They were much more numerous than the Israelites. They were threatened. They encamped against them. They were ready to attack. And yet the Lord tells them something interesting. <laughs> he tells them to be still and see the deliverance of their God. To stand still and to see it. This is what the Lord did. 2 Kings 19, verse 35 says, That night the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 men in the Assyria camp. 185,000 soldiers did not wake up. When the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. <laughs> so Sennacherib, king of uh, Assyria broke camp and withdrew, and he returned to Nineveh, and he stayed there. <laughs> God said, you just stand still. <laughs> King Hezekiah needed a plan. He wanted to go. He wanted to conquer them. He wanted to run. He wanted to hand over the city, whatever, so that they could live. And God said, you hold off. You just watch. <laughs> You just watch. And God took care of them at the break of day, like the psalmist says. In verse 5b, God will help her at the break of day. Be still and know. Stand firm and you'll see your deliverance. Verses 6, back in Psalm says, Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Come and see the works of the Lord. Friends, if you're in a place of trouble, let me encourage you to come to the book. <laughs> come to this holy book 
and search the pages, you'll find someone in your situation. You'll find someone that God showed himself strong. Even when God said, be still and see, you open the book and you will see. Cling to the book, read it, see the wonders of God. I love that verse in Habakkuk, Habakkuk 3 verse 2. It says, make this your prayer. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, O Lord. I stand in awe of your deeds. Renew them in our day. In our times, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. How will we know what God has done if we don't read the book? Read the book. And you can say with Habakkuk, I've heard of your fame. I stand in awe of what you've done, O Lord. Now do it in our day. Renew it in our times. In our times, make it known. In our times, make it known. That's a wonderful prayer to pray. The wonders he's performed, what he has done for his own, it's amazing. Verse 7 talks about the God of Jacob. He's a covenant God, amen? He keeps a covenant to a thousand generations. When we yield our lives to him, we become his, and he becomes ours. <laughs> We become his, and he becomes ours. He takes care of his own church. He takes care of his own. Spend time in his presence. Run to that river of God. <laughs> Wash over me, Lord, with your joy. Give me a double dose of that peace today, Lord. Give me a dose of that peace. There is river, amen, that makes glad. That makes glad God's people. The psalmist says, in the presence of the Lord, there is joy forevermore. Joy. Joy. What the world needs is joy. <laughs> Amen. That joy is found in Jesus. Verse 10 continues. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. God Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. God is the one doing the work here. In case you didn't notice that, it's God doing the work. We like to do it our way, don't we? <laughs> we worry about it. We twiddle our thumbs. We pace. We do whatever we can do. We've got to do something. Someone's got to do something. This isn't working. This isn't working. We've got to do something. Even as Christians, we come and we pray and we hand in our blue slips and we say, please pray. Will somebody pray with me? And we pray about it and then we say, oh, I know what we can do. We're going to call this, you know, assistance program tomorrow. We'll call, we'll call this. There's people that to help us. There's people. And we start reaching out and there's times when God just says, be still. Be still. Stop trying to figure it out on your own. We are not God. We are God's. We belong to God. He belongs to us. He will take care of us. Amen? We need to hand it to him. Don't start to figure it out. Don't call on your friend. Don't look in the yellow pages for assistance. <laughs> Be still and wait for God. Give it to him and let him do it. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. God tells us be still. That's a challenge for us. As moms and dads, we want to fix it. We want to fix it. You got a problem, we'll fix it. That's broken, well, daddy will fix it. <laughs> you got a boo-boo, mommy will kiss it. It'll be better. We want to fix it. We need to let God fix it. We need to be still and let God be God in our lives. God commands us to be still. It doesn't say if you want peace, be still. If you need help, be still. If you can't figure any way out of it, be still. <laughs> No, it just says be still. It's a command. Be still and know that I am God. Let God do it. He has the master plan. 
going through cancer, going into the unknown, the uncertain. It's not easy. It's not easy going through that. It's not, not at all. Often when pastor was sick, he, I would get him in bed first, and then he was tired so, many, so much earlier than I was, and I would go downstairs. I had to get away from it. I would go and do something else. And I would come up, and I would hear him snoring, and it was dark. And I would walk into the darkness, and I remember saying, Lord, I hate the dark. But it wasn't the dark room that scared me. It was not knowing what was ahead. Not knowing what was ahead. It's in those times, church, that God says, be still. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. What happens when you enter a dark room and you can't see? If you're still for a minute, your eyes will adjust. You will see things you didn't see rushing in there. We're all too quick to rush in there. <laughs> and then we complain and we say, Lord, I didn't see anything. I tripped on that. I stubbed my toe. I broke my little pinky toe. And God says, be still. <laughs> be still. Be still. And know that I am God, God says. You see, God is with us. And he will be exalted. If your way seems unclear today, if your eyes can't see what the next step is, let me encourage you to be still. To be still and wait on him. Bask in his presence. Fill your home with praise music. I mean fill it. <laughs> Fill it so it's heard everywhere in every corner of the house. Fill it with praise music. Be in the word and let the word be in you. Put scriptures here and there and everywhere so you can see them. At the table, at the mirror, in the bathroom, wherever you spend time, put the word of God there. Be still and know. Hope in the word. Know that God is a good God. And when you're his, he's got your best interest at heart. He's got your best interest at heart when we're his. He will be exalted, exalted in your life and in mine. So we need to be still and know that I am God. You are not alone. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Verse 11 says, the Lord Almighty is with us. The Lord Almighty is with us. Verse 1, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in time of trouble. In time of trouble. If you're in a time of trouble, I want you to come today. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray. If you want someone to pray with you, you come on up and we will pray. Because I want you to know that God is with you. He hasn't forsaken you. He's got a plan. He's got a plan. And it's for our best and for his. And he will get the glory. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. Anyone? All right, we're going to pray. You can stand. We're going to pray where we are then. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. You are so good to us. Lord, your love is overwhelming. Father, as we have come to the river today, the river of your presence, oh Lord, may your peace flow into our hearts and lives. Lord, there are those in these pews, Lord. There are empty pews in this place of people who are in a difficult place. Father, we come to you on their behalf. We ask, oh God, that the river of God would bring peace to our hearts and to our lives. That your joy, oh God, would be renewed in our hearts and in our minds. May your healing flow to your people, I pray.
Lord, may you remind us over and over again that you are with us. You are an ever-present help in time of need. Lord, that we can find refuge in you. We can find the strength that we need in you, Lord. No matter what the difficulty is, Lord, our strength comes from you. Our hope comes from you. Our joy and our peace and our deliverance comes from from you. Help us, Lord, to be still in your presence. Help us, Lord, to bask in your presence and to drink of your word, I pray. Lord God, be exalted in this, your church. Be glorified in each one of our members, I pray. In Jesus' precious holy name, we love you, Lord. We glorify your name. You are worthy of our praises, Lord. Jesus, be the encourager of our heart and the lifter of our head, I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Hug one another. Encourage one another. We need one another. Let's build each other up. Amen.